Now let's move on to GPU architecture specifics. So uh, I think we've already covered this, but there is some confusing terminology on what exactly is a processor core in a GPU. So there's a thing called shader cores and CUDA cores, um, but we define, we define a processor core as that which can fetch and issue instructions. So that is what we define as a processor core. So for a GPU, the compute unit is the processor core. And um, each of these compute units, um, they make available um, a number of these shader cores or CUDA cores, which are equivalent, but not exactly equal to um, the uh, individual elements of a SIMD unit in a CPU. Okay, so um, inside the compute unit is these shader cores or CUDA cores, and they um, execute the, for example, the floating point instructions as part of hardware thread teams. Okay, and those thread teams are known as warps on CUDA hardware and wavefronts on AMD hardware. The compute unit is responsible for scheduling instructions, moving data, and can be considered the actual cores in a GPU processor. So instructions are issued by the compute units are executed by these hardware thread teams. And every element in the hardware thread teams so is a hardware thread. And those elements, known as CUDA cores or shader cores, each provide um, the ability to execute floating points instructions in parallel. Okay, so it's sim it's SIMD like, but the difference between SIMD and SIMT is you um, the compute unit, um, so a uh, a individual hardware thread can signal to the compute unit to say that, hey, I would like to execute this code path. So there is that independence in, in a sense. So the, um, the hardware thread signals to the compute unit, like I need to uh, execute this code path. And then the compute unit governs all the hardware threads in the thread team to follow that, comp that code path and then results that are not meant to contribute to the result are masked out. So that's the difference between SIMD and SIMT. And I think we, we, we discussed this yesterday. So hardware threads operate in lockstep. And in lockstep um, with the units of other lanes in the team. So the hardware threads are called CUDA cores and shader cores. Uh, for NVIDIA and AMD terminology. So on NVIDIA hardware, these teams are 32 to 64 lanes wide and known as warps. And on AMD, they're known as wavefronts. Okay, so yet we've already covered that. But here is a diagram of uh, the different architectures of GPUs that are out there. But in reality, they're all doing the same thing. They're all implementing SIMT. And um, for the, uh, for the, um, the NVIDIA um, architecture, you have this thing called a stream processor um, or the streaming multiprocessor. And that streaming multiprocessor is responsible for issuing instructions to these banks of hardware threads known as stream processors, and each bank um, appears to have 16 CUDA cores in it. So a wavefront is 32 CUDA cores, and so a hardware thread team is 32 CUDA cores wide. And those, those CUDA cores have access to register memory um, that is for that thread team. And they have access to shared L1 and L2 caches. Okay, so that um, that shared L1 cache looks like it is part of the streaming multiprocessor. The same is true of an AMD um, AMD compute unit. 
So in AMD compute unit, there's a registers area, and then there's these four banks of 16 um, shader cores. And each bank of 16 shader cores is responsible for issuing or for servicing the, um, the 64 hardware threads of a wavefront. So, and it does that over four clock cycles. So it takes four clock cycles for this bank of 16 um, to process the instructions for a wavefront, a wavefront of hardware threads. On the Intel um, XEHPG, you've got a similar thing again, um, but you have these things called XE vector engines. So the XE vector engine um, has a register file, and then you have these SIMT units. And I think I think there's um, eight of them um, in a SIMD unit, but I need to check that, sorry. But there is a number of SIMT units um, inside, inside here. And so they're all pretty much doing the same thing. The, um, whether it's called a streaming multiprocessor, a compute engine, or an XE core, they're all issuing instructions to be operated over thread teams um, by, by the available hardware. Uh, go ahead, Alexis. Oh, did, sorry, we got, uh, thought, sorry, you, you, just, you just appeared. I thought you were going to yeah. ask a question. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know that. Um, <clears throat> and the shared memory, the LDS, yeah. uh, where is it? Is somewhere there in the orange area or? Uh, yeah, so the LD, the LDS cache, um, would I would slot it in the middle here, so right in the right in the middle, um, in okay. this diagram. Yep. So I'd slot it in in there. Now I don't know where I don't know where the the cache lives on the um, Nvidia and um, the Intel, but it's it would be very close by. Okay. Okay, so there is a slight bit of confusion to navigate when it comes to thinking about blocks and threads. Um, in CUDA AMD terminology, a thread is synonymous with the execution of a kernel instance as, um, as part of a block. And that's a software concept. But in reality, in hardware space, these kernel instructions um, are physically executed by a hardware thread in a lane of a thread team. So, um, so the compute unit issues the instructions, and those instructions are executed in parallel by the lanes of the thread teams. One or more thread teams may participate in a block, uh, which means neighboring threads um, in a block may not be part of the same thread team. So an efficient choice, given this architecture here, an efficient choice for the number of threads in a block is always a multiple of the, the team size. So when it comes to Satonics, then uh, the number of threads in a block, um, efficient choices are 64, 128, 256, for example. Um, they would be efficient choices for the number of threads in a block. Uh, you can get the warp size field when you're doing a device query. So the warp size gives you how big the thread teams are. Um, now, I've already discussed the difference between SIMD and SIMT uh, in that SIMT has this, um, this ability to pursue a code path provided everyone else comes along for the ride. And you can, you can see then that if you have a lot of hardware threads that are in executing independent code paths, the whole thread team has to come along. So thread divergence, and thread divergence means that one thread does one code path, another thread does another code path. Because all the threads have to come along for the ride, every thread has to execute every code path that is chosen. And so thread divergence <clears throat> is not a good idea. So if you can keep your thread divergence to a minimum, uh, 
in your kernels, then you won't have um, then you won't have um, a case where um, every thread has to participate in every code path that, that is encountered. Um, so yes, to try and keep that, try and keep thread divergence to a minimum. All right, here's some uh, compute performance numbers for some different AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. The um, compute performance for the MI250X, that is um, that is aggregated over the two GCDs. So every GCD, which represents itself to HIP as a unique compute device, that is that has half that um, that compute performance. So this 47.9 teraflops is aggregated over the two. And of course, that is an ideal which is never actually achieved. So we've talked about occupancy before. Um, now occupancy is just the ratio of the number of uh, thread teams that are ready to execute instructions versus the theoretical number of wavefronts that you can have active or ready to go. And having a high occupancy for your algorithm is great, is good because you can hide latency with a deep pipeline. So compute units can switch focus between thread teams with minimal overhead. Um, and yet yeah, the whole idea is to hide, hide latencies while memory is being fetched. So naturally, you'd want to have as many thread teams active as possible. And occupancy is the ratio of active thread teams to theoretically the theoretical number of active thread teams. So full occupancy is good for performance generally, but there are a number of things that can limit or impact occupancy. So remember that um, the shared memory space is shared between all blocks that are on a compute unit. So if each block asks for or consumes too much shared memory, then the HIP runtime has to limit the occupancy to compensate or limit the number of blocks to compensate. So there are limits on occupancy. Um, there are limits on the number of blocks that you can run per compute unit. And there are limits on the number of thread teams per compute unit. There are limits on the number of threads per block, limits on the number of threads per compute unit, and limits on the number of registers available per compute unit, limits on the number of registers per block and the number of shared memory per block. And so, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of limitations. Um, and when you're building, um, when you're building a kernel, um, you have to have a, have some understanding that if you run up against any of these limits, it could theoretically, or it could limit your occupancy. So you need to build your kernels with these limits in mind. If the number of software threads in a block is too low, so let's just say that you're um, let's just say that your blocks just had one thread in it. I mean, that would be horrible for performance, but but your occupancy is then reduced by the number of permissible blocks per compute unit. And if you if you have too many software threads in a block, then you might not even be able to schedule the kernel. So I think um, with the MI250X GPUs, the um, the number of threads is limited to 1,024 per, per block 